Today we're going to be talking about the E3D High Flow Obix City and Hot End. Uh, this is designed for the Bamboo Labs printers, your P1P, your P1S, and your X1C. So the version of the Hot End that I'm checking out today is the pre-assembled version. Uh, the E3D just started offering. Uh, basically everything is set up and you just have to plug it in and you're ready to go. It also has E3D's Obix City and Coating, which will stop uh, extruded filament from basically sticking to the nozzle. Uh, it should help like limit print failures and stuff like that. Uh, if you have had that experience in the past, I have, where like it's just extruded filaments sticking to the nozzle and knocks off the print. This should help with that. So I done a bunch of testing on this like nozzle just to see like uh, what its limits were. Um, I was really impressed with uh, just how much better it was over the stock high end. And we'll go over those results later in the video um, and kind of give you a breakdown of what I found. Uh, it's honestly surprising. I didn't really think it would make that much of a difference. It was my first time using a high flow hot end, but it, it really does. And you can kind of see it, especially in reliability. I didn't really tune it for speed. Um, you can do that if you want, but for me, it was just try to make it more reliable. At the end of the day, this is a, a printer that my business runs on. And that's something that I prioritize over speed is just reliability. So I'm just gonna put up some of the volumetric flow tests here without me talking, just let you examine them yourself as best as you can. And uh, we'll, I'll come back to you afterwards. So it was kind of weird. There wasn't that many like catastrophic failures. More that there was warping and just inconsistent layers. Usually when I'm testing a hot end like this, I expect to see like massive tears in it at a certain point but it didn't really happen until it was like over 60 cubic millimeters um but there was warping and inconsistent layers at the lower uh cubic millimeters so what i ended up having to do was kind of just really closely examine it and also look at the e3d a, a viewer a subscriber actually sh uh, showed me e3d have like a, a i guess like you call it like a configuration document or a slicer document that you can just take their settings and import it in and what i found was is their document along with what i found was that 32 cubic millimeters a second was kind of the best all around for all filaments i kind of found it was basically the sweet point they do recommend though turning it down to 29 cubic millimeters a second for pla and and that's kind of more of a reliability thing than anything else so i actually went along and did that and I got really consistent results uh, from all the models I was printing um, and really no trouble. Uh, it was very simple to do, really. It's not like in the past when we were doing Crowley machines where, you know, he, that was an absolute nightmare. But this was like so simple. Their results were, because we were on the same machine, you know, you can actually just take their results. You don't need to actually do any of these tests if you don't want to. You can just take what they recommend and it does work because... The, it's because of the way the bamboo lab machine is they're so tightly integrated um one concern i did have though was about pid tuning and you can't do that on this machine so you're you're really relying on them to have this perfectly engineered for uh, your bamboo machine one thing a lot of people brought up to me when i was like in our discord and we were gonna i was saying that i was doing a review on this was the price and to be honest with you the price is kind of steep like compared to the stock bamboo hot end. This uh, hot end cost me £85. Um, plus I had to pay a customs fee because I don't live in the UK. I think So I think in total I spent like, uh, I think it was over €120 Euros to get this shipped to me. So really quickly I'm going to give you my closing thoughts on this hot end. And I know this was a super quick video. Um, I plan on keeping this hot end in my machine for like six months uh, to do some proper testing and see what the longevity is like. Um, but right now, for me, I don't think this hot end is for the majority of people. I think most like standard everyday users who don't want to push their machine to the max uh, don't really need to buy this. It's expensive compared to the stock hot ends. Um, the the benefits are there, but I don't think if you're like a, an everyday user, you really care about these kind of things. So it's not going to make much of a difference to you if you're looking to push it like you push the motion system to the max. Sure, get this. It's probably the best option. But, like I said, majority of people are not going to care about this. And they probably shouldn't. It's not going to 
improve their lives or improve their printers by enough of a margin to justify 85 pound for one hot end one nozzle and not being able to change the nozzle and you know i know they say it's wear resistant it's probably not going to like degrade over time but you know only time will tell with that it's a company can tell you oh this is never going to break down but you don't know that till it does break down um so yeah i think just stick with the stock hot ends don't uh, waste your money don't it's 85 pound it's very expensive um but look time will tell i'm gonna keep it in my machine for six months and i'll come back to you with a follow-up video in six months time with how it performs um if you like the video and you know you want to see more subscribe like comment we're gonna be doing a giveaway in the next video so i'm pretty happy we're pretty excited with that uh, we had a really good month this month on youtube my best month ever and yeah i just want to say thanks by giving something back so yeah subscribe leave a comment i'll see you in the next one